Have you recently been diagnosed with high cholesterol? Is your doctor recommending you take a Torvastatin, but you're concerned about the possible side effects? If so, this video is for you. Keep watching to get a doctor's perspective on what to expect from this medication. Welcome back to Family Med. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Eric Richardson, a board certified family practice physician. On our channel, we focus on trying to give you practical and accurate medical information to help you and your family make healthy decisions. Now, if you think that something like this would be helpful to you, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification button, and follow along with us. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about one of the most common medications that we use to treat cholesterol called atorvastatin. This is a medication that's been available in the United States since 1996. It was originally released under the trade name of Lipitor, and luckily it's gone generic, so atorvastatin is a more common name that used now. The principal use of this medication is to help control cholesterol as well as decrease your risk of heart attacks and stroke and diabetes, or decrease your risk of a second heart attack or stroke if you already had one. Atorvastatin belongs to the class of medications called HMG CoA reductase inhibitors, or more commonly referred to as statins. They work by inhibiting a part of the enzyme process which your body uses in the production of cholesterol. When you stop that process, you produce less cholesterol and your levels go down. That's a basic thought on how this works, but it's a lot more complex than that, and frankly, the whole process isn't completely understood. It's felt though that atorvastatin specifically and the statin medications in general work on the blood vessels to help stabilize plaques that can form. If these plaques get large enough, they can either block the blood vessel or become weak and rupture, causing an acute heart attack or stroke. There is some thought as well that it acts somewhat of an anti-inflammatory on the inside of the blood vessels and maybe even decreases the ability to form clots in these areas. There is a lot of discussion out there in regards to the effect that cholesterol has in relation to the heart disease or strokes. I don't want to get into all the arguments either way with this because frankly it's a changing topic. What we do know though is that in several very large well-designed studies show that elevated cholesterol does increase your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. And going along with that, taking the statin medication significantly decreased your risk of those same events and those who took them. Even more definitively shown were those who've had a prior history of a heart attack or stroke, or those who have diabetes, were shown to absolutely benefit from taking these medications. This is probably one of the major reasons your doctor has recommended that you be taking this. So again, I don't want to get into the debate of whether you should be on this or not. I'm assuming that since you're watching this, your doctor's recommended that you take it. So we're going to go into the assumption that this is important for you to be on it. Also, in this video, I'm not going to be going over the most important things that you can be doing, and that is making those diet and lifestyle changes that will make the biggest difference. We'll get into that in a future video. In this video, we're going to help you understand what to expect with the medication and what kind of side effects you need to be watching for. Well, first of all, it comes in a tablet of 10, 20, 40, and 80 milligrams. It's meant to be taken once a day at the, with a top effective dose being at 80 milligrams. Most cholesterol synthesis happens at night, so it's been found to be most effective to take it in the evening. An important thing to remember about this medication specifically, and cholesterol medications in general, is that it only works while you're taking. I have people come in all the time with their cholesterol high after we originally had it controlled, telling me that they stopped the medication because they already fixed it. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work this way. Unless you have some underlying lifestyle issues that are causing your high cholesterol and you fix those, you need to stay on the medication. Don't stop them unless you discuss it with your doctor. Atorvastatin is one of my favorite cholesterol medications because it is usually very well tolerated. It's rare the patient that I have that stops it because of any significant side effects. But that being said, any medication has a potential for side effects and atorvastatin is no different. And just like any other medication that you take, if you look at the package insert where they list all the different side effects, you'll read a long list. For atorvastatin, they list symptoms such as upper respiratory infections, headaches, joint pain, diarrhea, urinary tract infections, nausea, heartburn, insomnia, and some mild liver enzyme elevations. I would say that all these are fairly uncommon in general, but certainly possible. In my experience though, as well as what we have seen in the studies, the most common reason that we see people not tolerate being on atorvastatin is because some sort of muscle pain symptoms. These can be a feeling of muscle aches, similar to what you may feel when you get sick with the flu, muscle cramps, or even weakness. This still is not common, but if there's something that's gonna be bothering a patient, this is the most common one that we see. Now in general, this doesn't mean that any significant issues are going on or that any damage is being done. There is a problem with this that I'll talk about in a minute, but usually all we need to do is just have you stop the medication and the symptoms go away. And then oftentimes after the symptoms are gone, 
If it's really felt that necessary that you're still on this medication, we'll switch you to a different one of the same class, and oftentimes you won't have the same problem. Now, there are some people, though, that just can't tolerate taking them, so it's not worth it for them to be on it. Now, if you're having these type of symptoms, make sure you work with your doctor to find out what's best for you. Now, there are other things that you need to be aware of with this medication. There are some more rare side effects that also you should watch out for. The first one is a condition that we call rhabdomyolysis. This is a condition where you get a breakdown of the muscles that sends byproducts to the kidneys causing kidney damage and even failure. This is very uncommon. One of the first medications years ago called Baycol was pulled from the market for this reason back in 2001. Like I said, this is not common at all. In fact, I haven't seen or even heard of cases around me happening with the newer medications, but it still is something that is possible. So if you have severe muscle pains while taking this medication, then get to your doctor, get some blood work, and have, them, have this evaluated. Now, other more serious reactions can include liver toxicity, allergic reactions, pancreatitis, changes to your blood counts, including certain anemias, and a decreased uh, white blood cell production. These aren't common, but they can be easily monitored by your doctor while you're taking this medication. Now, there are some conditions that we need to talk about that being on these medications for long term can possibly put you at risk for. There have been some concerns regarding use of statins and its effect on memory and dementia. There have been reports of memory changes while being on this medication as well as others in the same class. Larger studies looking at this though haven't found a significant correlation between the two, but it doesn't mean that it can't happen. If you notice memory changes upon starting this medication, it'd be worth talking to your doctor about it. Some have seen that this may be more common in medications that are we call fat bound or lipophilic medications like atorvastatin and simvastatin. Now, if this happens, switching to one of the more water-bound statins like rosuvastatin or pravastatin may be helpful. This is definitely a discussion you need to have with your doctor if you notice any issues. Now, studies looking at their effect on dementia have actually shown some role in the prevention of it happening. Now, another area that needs to be discussed is the risk that statins may play in the development of diabetes. Large studies looking at this have shown that there may be a small increased risk of developing diabetes while taking these types of medications. This risk appears to increase the higher the dose that you're taking. The risk is small, but certainly something to keep in mind. Overall though, when you compare the benefit that was found by taking it for those felt to be at higher risk for heart disease, it still is felt to be worth the risk. This definitely is an individual decision though that you need to discuss with your doctor and how this may apply to you. When you look at side effects and the risk of medications, it's easy to get worried and not want to take them due to the possibility of something that could happen. In actuality, this may be the right thing for you. But it's important though, when making these decisions to step back and look at the big picture. You have to look at your own individual risks and see why this may be important for you. If you've already had a heart attack, a stroke, or you have diabetes, the data is very clear that you need to be on these medications. If you can tolerate them well, it really is definitely worth their small risk of these problems. Now, if you have not had any of these problems and your doctor is recommending you take this for what we call primary prevention of heart disease, then talk to them about why they think you're at higher risk. Look at what your risk factors are and talk to your doctor about how you can change these risk factors. If you smoke, quit smoking. If you have a horrible diet and aren't exercising, then make the commitment to make those changes. You can't say that you don't want to take a medication that has known benefits because you think it's going to kill you and still continue to eat garbage, not exercise, or smoke. So overall, this is a great medication to treat your cholesterol and decrease your risk of heart attack and stroke. I use it a lot because as I said before, the side effects tend to be minimal, it has great studies showing that it works, and finally, it's pretty cheap. Luckily, it's generic and you can get it for a good price. In fact, a 30-day supply will run you anywhere from $8 to $15 at most pharmacies. If diet and lifestyle changes have not been enough to control your cholesterol, and your doctor recommends that you take atorvastatin as part of your treatment regimen, Hopefully you have a little more confidence in using this as part of your treatment plan. Well, I hope you found this information to be helpful. If so, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button and share it with your friends and family. And if your health is really important to you, consider subscribing and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our other content. Now don't go anywhere because if you're looking at ways that you can make a start in your diet and lifestyle changes to treat your cholesterol, click here to watch some simple steps that you can do to start your diet journey. And click here to watch one of my other videos that can help you in your health journey. But until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Richardson, and remember, take care of your body because it's the only one you have.